Dr. Chol Kim here from San Diego, California. I'm sad it's almost the end of summer, but I suspect the weather won't change much even through winter. But even still, summer has a special place in my heart and I'm gonna miss it. Anyways, we have a 55 year old, recently retired uh, firefighter. So he's a total stud and he wants to keep on doing fun things in life, but he's got back pain and right leg pain. And if you look closely, he's got some degenerative scoliosis, severe degeneration at two, three, and three, four. Not much stenosis, but we know that that's where his pain's coming from because we've done two separate targeted transframmal injections at two, three, and three, four on the right side. And during the anesthetic phase, he got 70% better that lasted for about a week, and then 89% better, which lasted for two hours, and then 75% for a few days. But again, the pain keeps coming back. So based on the diagnostic injections, his radiographic imaging studies, his clinical history, I'm very confident that the symptoms are coming from these two degenerative disc levels. And after much ado, we've decided to proceed with a uh, endoscopic surgery where we can go in here, reinitiate a healing response, make sure the nerve is free, and find any entrapped nuclear fragments within an annular tear. And I anticipate that he'll get a very good result with a tiny little band-aid afterwards, and hopefully he'll avoid a big surgery like a fusion. So we're all hoping for the best. All right, we're getting started. I have the perfect x-ray at that level. And now I'm gonna use the spinal needle to confirm the perfect entry point. It's my little secret, don't tell anybody. All right, Amy, the perfect little poke hole. It's so adorable. Now I'm gonna use the spaghetti noodle dilator. Look how skinny it is, like the inside of a big pen. And once I get this perfectly, I'll put a straw over this and a slightly bigger dilator and a bigger one and slowly dilate up. Okay, I've got the spaghetti noodle dilator down. It went through the foramen and it's resting on the back of the spine. And look how far back it, it sits. Like I can feel that right there. That's the disc bulge and disc osteophyte. It's aiming toward the disc. You can tell it's sticking out. Now I'm gonna stick this tiny little needle into the disc and inject the blue dye into the middle of the disc and watch it leak out the back. Shot. Alrighty, this is the three, four level right here. Here's the neural foramen. The canal is in here. You can see this big bump right there. It's not, I mean, it's not big, but it's clearly a bump. And I've been slowly releasing all the adhesions from the arthritis. And I'm gonna go in here and look for some trapped fragments and restart the healing process. There's the exiting nerve root right there, look away. Cause you know, my mama always said, spine surgery will be a lot easier without blood vessels and nerves. So we're monitoring any jumping and we've got electrophysiologic monitoring over in the corner. You'll hear them go, we have a burst, we have a spike, we have a train. And all those different pieces of information help me make sure that the nerve is safe. That in my eyeballs. And the force, Luke, the force. Look how everything's stuck down there. By the time I'm done, this should be all released. All right, T, here's Wagner's arch, and here's my entry point to the canal. Inferiorly, I'm wrapping around the pedicle shot, and you can see this bump. You can see how everything's stuck to it still. And I'm going to slowly reduce this down and keep releasing until everything is free flowing. Try not to irritate the exiting nerve root. That's probably part of the DRG. That's not a good thing to irritate. Now I'm going to use the laser to open this up a little bit better because the laser works way better on this hard, firm, rubbery tissue than all these other instruments. All right, I got my favorite instrument here, the side firing them, YAG homium laser. Look how well this works. It's non-electrical, so it won't electrocute the nerve either, so I can get right next to it. It's like a scalpel. It's scary if you don't know what you're doing. There's the little hint of blue now. I can see part of the disc that is disrupted from the inside right there. You can see the disc carnation coming out. It's like popping a pimple. It's oddly gratifying, but it's like my teenage kids. I'm not going to come out without a Okay, fight. so now I got that bump off. There's the, there's the bone spur uh, remnant. And now you can see the fat coming in. Look at it, it's pulsating. Kind of cool. Feeling good about this. I can get this easily in now. Now I can do the next level. That went really well. I'm very happy so far. Backing out, hugging the facet joint, or well, the lateral aspect of it, where all the dorsal rami nerves live. These nerves get buried in inflammatory tissue. If you've ever had a rotator cuff tendonitis, you'll know how painful that is. And part of the reason the surgery works so well is that we're treating that chronic inflammatory condition. Alrighty, next, doing the next level, L2-3. Putting the spaghetti noodle dilator down a perfect entry point. It's working kind of. 
Oh yeah, look at that leakage. This disc is really disrupted, chat. Okay, I'm at 2-3 now. This is the level that was really inflamed. There's a huge bone spur. The disc is just busted up, look at that. I'm just gonna keep on cleaning this up until we can see the dural tube pulsating and I can pass all my instruments back and forth and any trapped blue pieces of disc is removed. That combined with restarting the healing process so it goes down the correct path instead of getting stuck in the chronic inflammatory path is what the treatment is essentially entails. That's the pathophysiologic mechanism of treatment. Okay, so there's the edge of the bone spur. I'm using the laser to reduce this down. I don't know how people don't, do, don't use the laser for this surgery. It's so much more fun. All right, look how cool this is. You can see the drill tube right there. Watch, it'll start pulsating if I stop moving. Look at that. How cool is that? I'm almost done. I just need to make sure that that dural tube is totally free and all of this was stuck to it. But not no more. Yes, I just got to clean up that. Woo! He just jumped when I did that just by gently caressing the nerve because that's what nerves do. Doesn't like being messed with. Because my mom always said it's my turn to be a lot easier without blood vessels and nerves. She was totally right. Okay, so this little stuff, it's probably nothing, but it's too close to the dural tube to use the Elman probe, which is electrical, stimulating the nerve. So I'm going to use the laser to see if I can get there. Because the laser is mechanical, not electrical. I can work right next oh, to the yes. Yeah. Now look at this dural tube. Totally free, unencumbered. If it had a mouth, it would be smiling right now, I hope. Okay, look at how good of a view of the dural tube you have. I've also felt in there with the probe. There's a few other, and now I'm backing out, and as I back out, I'm just looking around to make sure I'm not missing anything. You can clearly see that. Here's the exiting nerve root. Look away. It's surrounded by a leash of fat, but look how injected it is. Sign of bad inflammation. And if anybody's had the chronic inflammatory condition, woo, don't know how miserable it is. Now I'm doing the facet rhizotomy and capsulography. Same thing, this looks very inflamed to me. Alrighty, a vampire was in this room. One little tiny stitch of a 3-0, some skin glue, and a band-aid is all that's going to need. My surgery's all done, I did it through those little vampire bites. I put one little 3-0 vicral stitch in there, and now for the band-aids. My favorite part of the surgery. These are probably the most expensive band-aids in the whole wide world. Also the stickiest. And the cutest! Look at that, the surgery went beautifully, so best wishes on a speedy recovery. Right guys?